kemudian kaki tumpu berada di samping bola dan kaki yang untuk menendang berada di belakang bola seperti pada gambar ini jadi kaki tumpu harus berada tepat di samping bola tidak di belakangnya ataupun di depannya karena kalau tidak di sampingnya akan sulit untuk menendang kemudian kaki yang untuk menendang diayun ke arah bola berkenaan pada bola tepat di tengah dan menggunakan kaki bagian dalam seperti pada gambar ini jadi berkenaan tepat di tengah bola karena kalau berada di bola bagian bawah nanti bola akan naik setelah melakukan tendangan ada gerakan ayunan tidak diam di tempat setelah ada gerakan lanjutan baru kembali ke posisi awal ini contoh pelaksanaan menggunakan kaki kiri dan ini layangan lambatnya dengan kaki kanan bisa diamati dari video ini gerakan yang benar dengan menggunakan kaki kiri juga sama ini dari sisi kanan dan ini menggunakan kaki kiri lihat video ini kaki tumpu berada di samping bola posisi badan kita harus menggunakan kuda kuda yang tumpuannya itu adalah pada bagi kita posisi kudanya seperti ini Kedua tangan disatukan dan kedua jempol dirapatkan seperti ini. Ini mana yang nyaman saja, boleh seperti ini tangan kanan ada di atas ataupun tangan kiri yang ada di atas. Ini bergantung pada pemain itu sendiri, mana yang lebih enak. Nah, sedangkan kalau misalkan saya, ini lebih enak tangan kanan di atas dan kedua jempol dibuat rapat seperti ini. Usahakan digenggam dengan keras. Itu adalah posisi gerakan tangan. Kemudian posisi gerakan kaki Yang pertama dan yang kedua sudah kita belajar Yang pertama adalah posisi kuda-kuda Dan posisi pada kita yaitu kuda-kuda Dengan kekuatan berkumpul pada kukis Dan kuda-kuda lebih lebar daripada bahu Yang kedua adalah posisi tangan Tangan disatukan seperti ini dan jempol dirapatkan Nah, ketika bola datang dari arah lawan atau dari tempat sendiri Kita posisi kuda-kudanya juga harus stay tempat dan ketika melakukan gerakan melangkah kaki itu ada dua jenis pertama hanya dia bisa melangkah baik kanan atau kiri dan berbagai bola dan ada juga menggunakan beberapa langkah misalnya ini nah ini ke kanan dan juga nah ini itu yang perlu diperhatikan saat melakukan teknik masih mau pada Contoh praktiknya adalah seperti ini Bola dilempar dan dikembangkan ke bawah Ingat uh, bagian yang digunakan pada uh, saat melakukan passing bawah adalah 
mulai dari tulang ini, tulang tangan kita, pergelangan tangan sejengkal. Sejengkal dari tulang ini sampai ke sini. Dan ingat, di saat melakukan pasif bapak itu, kita jadi tangan kita ini harus tetap lurus. Jangan bengkok seperti ini. Ya. Karena kalau misalnya kita buat bengkok, nanti mulanya lari ke belakang. Tapi, untuk uh, ini kita gunakan saat melakukan pasif bawah ini lurus. Dan jika melakukan pasif bawah perorangan, bulan ini harus melampaui sejengkal dari atas kepala atau di atas kepala. Jangan dribble the longer the ball is in your hands the shorter the ball is out of your hands the shorter the ball is out of your hands that's going to make it harder for the defender to steal the basketball if you don't pound the ball um, then it'll make it easy for the defender to kind of pick your pocket when that ball is not in your hands it's not really easy to steal the ball from you when the ball is actually in your hands so pound the basketball and all your ball handling drills over pound it you know, really try to throw that ball through the ground. And then when you get in real games, you don't have to pound the ball as hard, but it will start to become second nature for you of just dribbling the basketball harder. Um, and again, that's gonna help you have more control with the basketball. But another thing I didn't even mention is it's gonna help you have a faster handle because the harder you can whip the ball left to right between your legs, the faster your handle's gonna be, the harder it is going to be to guard you. So pound the basketball and dribble hard um, during all of your drills. So tip number two, we have used the finger pads of your hand. Um, we don't want to dribble with our fingertips. We don't want to do that. We also don't want to dribble with smack with our palm. We want to dribble with our finger pads. This is going to give us the most control. And I want you to think about pretending you were shooting the ball. Would you shoot the ball with your fingertips? Would you shoot with the ball flat on your um, 
palm, you wouldn't do that. You would dribble, you would shoot the ball with the ball kind of on your pad, resting in your hand like I'm showing here. And that's pretty much how we want to dribble. There's a reason why we shoot like that and we dribble like that because um, because of the destruction of our hand. This makes it very easy to control the basketball. So when you dribble, you even want to kind of have that little follow through flick of the wrist like when you're shooting a basketball. So dribbling and shooting are actually more similar than a lot of people think. So when we go back to the last tip, you wanna pound the ball, and now you wanna add this tip. You wanna dribble with your finger pads, and you wanna um, follow through every dribble like it's a shot, and this is really gonna help you control the ball. It's gonna help the ball go down and come back up into your hand. If you don't do this follow through and you pat with your hand, you don't have any control over the ball, and you're not 100% sure that ball is going to come back to the spot um, that you want it to come back to. So use your finger pads, again, on all your dribbling drills and when you're dribbling in the games. But use these tips um, in your drills because they will become second nature. So when you step into the games, you won't even have to think about it. So tip number three, keep your head up. And the reason you want to keep your head up is simple. You want to be able to see the defense. You want you don't want to miss a teammate getting open or an opening that you can attack. Now, you want to practice keeping your head up as much as possible. Please note that in a game, you are going to look down sometimes. I look down when I'm doing my moves sometimes to find the ball. If you watch Stephen Curry, Kyrie Irving, these guys also look down when they're doing their moves. It's just going to happen. So. I don't want you to think if you look down, you're in trouble or anything. Just try to focus on looking up as much as possible and really focus on it in your training because the more you have your head up, the more you're going to be able to find teammates in open spots, the more you're going to be able to read the defense, and the more you'll be able to pick your spots and you'll know when you can attack or when you can get a shot off. So we don't want to be staring at the ground the whole time. We want to be looking up, but again, remember that Sometimes you are going to look down to find the ball that that's only right. You know, you can't do every move. You don't always know where the ball is going to be. Sometimes you might lose the handle. A lot of times on like say a behind the back move, you have to look down to find the basketball. Again, that's completely fine. You can watch all the NBA players. Um, they look down when they're doing moves sometimes to find the basketball. So keep that in mind when you're doing these moves, but also try to keep your head up as much as possible so that you can see the defense and see the openings. Tip number four, we're focusing on going north to south and not east to west. So what I mean by this is you wanna focus on going with your moves north to south, straight and back to retreat versus going too much east to west. Now, when I say east to west, I'm not just, I'm not talking about like a crossover where you quickly cross over left to right and then you blow by your man because that's still going north to south. What I mean by east to west is starting from the left side of the court, dribbling to the right side of the court, instead of beating your man um, and attacking. So we don't wanna go too much east to west. We wanna try to focus on going north to south. I see a lot of players, they do a whole bunch of ball handling moves, but they don't go anywhere. They just go side to side. They don't attack the rim. They don't blow by the man and attack the basket. And they don't attack the paint. So what you want to do here is, yes, come straight at your defender, attack your defender, do not attack the sideline. All right, tip number five, we have have a variety of moves. And what I mean by this is have some go-to moves that you feel comfortable with and going to in real games. One way to practice this I love to do is what I'm doing here, freestyle dribbling. It's just going up and down the court, practicing different moves that you feel comfortable with, kind of building that rhythm as a ball handler. Um, building that rhythm as a dribbler to, to have moves that you feel comfortable using in games. And the reason for this is because when a defender is guarding you, you want to have these go-to moves that you can go to and you want to be comfortable with doing different types of moves. Remember, in real games, you don't know what's going to happen. Um, we can't predict anything. All we can do is react. The faster we are at reacting, the better we are at reacting with our moves, the better we're going to fare against the defense now remember this freestyle drill is just a drill that you're going to use to improve your variety of moves when you get in real games you're not going to do all these moves at one time right here all you're doing is kind of like sharpening those tools 
that you have so when it's time to use them you're ready to use them but in the game you know you keep it basic but when it's time to pull out one of these moves boom you got them think about Kyrie Irving Steph Curry all these guys have go-to moves but they also have a variety of counter moves and that doubles the amount of moves they have which makes them virtually unguardable so if you can develop you know a few go-to moves a variety of go-to moves and then have counters for those moves and maybe even counters for those counters then you're going to be very hard to guard now tip number six probably one of the more important advanced tips now obviously the main tips in the beginning are very important like don't hit the ball with your palm and stuff but this tip is important you don't want to go full speed 100 percent speed all the time my coach used to tell me rocky i'd rather have a guy that can go zero to 20 to 50 back to 20 versus a player that can go 0 to 100 the whole time. So you'll, you'll notice NBA guys do this very well. The best guards, Chris Paul, Steph Curry, Kyrie, they do a great job in changing speeds, not going too hard, not wasting all their energy, but really just keeping their defender off balance and being able to change speeds. So another a, a good way to practice this is similar to that freestyle drill we did. Lapak kaki datar dengan permukaan. Duduk dengan posisi lutut menekuk membentuk sudut sekitar 45 derajat. Perlahan rebahkan tubuh ke lantai dan tahan posisi saat bagian tengah punggung menyentuh lantai, kemudian kunci perut. Kembalikan tubuh ke posisi semula, lalu lakukan kembali gerakan yang sama secara berulang. Pengaturan nafas pun perlu diperhatikan. Saat posisi merebahkan tubuh, perlahan tarik nafas. Sedangkan saat gerakan menarik tubuh ke posisi semula, hembuskan nafas. Jika sit up dilakukan di rumah, Kolong tempat tidur atau meja dapat dijadikan pengganti untuk menjadi tumpuan kaki. Push up. Tempatkan telapak tangan di permukaan. Atur posisi sejajar dengan bahu. Lurus dan rapatkan kedua kaki. Turunkan tubuh sampai dada berjarak sekitar 2 cm dari permukaan. Luruskan lengan sehingga tubuh kembali lagi ke posisi awal dan lakukan gerakan ini secara berulang. Dengan jeda satu detik untuk setiap gerakan, naik dan turun. Pengaturan nafas pun perlu diperhatikan. Saat posisi menurunkan tubuh, perlahan tarik nafas. Sedangkan saat posisi menaikkan tubuh ke posisi semula, hembuskan nafas.